Okay, we're looking at section 6.5. We're looking at rhombi and squares. And rhombi is another one of those words that reminds me of scaling. It's like rhombi. Uh, by the way, what you, what's a rhombi? A rhombi is plural for rhombus. So I guess if you have one rhombus, you would call it a rhombus. But here I have lots of rhombuses, but you wouldn't say rhombuses, you say rhombi. Okay. <clears throat> I just think this is so funny. Um, and who, who told me? Somebody went, when they went to Japan, did they take a trip to China? They actually, I think they might have seen these actually. And they, I think they grow them in plexiglass containers and they come out in the shape of a cube so that they're better in your refrigerator. They don't roll around as much or in the back seat of your vehicle when you, after you get the groceries. Anyway, uh, somebody want to try that experiment this summer? Maybe we could talk to Mark at Bluebird Gardens and see if he'll He'll set us up with some watermelon like that, huh? All right, parallelogram, just a quick little picture. Generally, your typical standard parallelogram looks like this. A rectangle looks like that, and there's a rhombus. A lot of times, like, kids think a rhombus maybe looks more like a square. In general, the biggest difference is, and we're going to get into the, all the details, you still have four congruent sides. Notice you do not have right angles. Okay, and I just want to point out, um, a rectangle and a rhombus are both a type of parallelogram. Uh, once again, the rules, if you, we have written down in class, which I don't think we will, uh, then you need to get this in your notes. So the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. You need to get that in your notes. And then if the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Notice how it says converse of this theorem right here. And the last statement, each diagonal of a rhombus bisects a pair of opposite angles. So if you notice here, we got a right angle, and then of course bisecting. Okay. Rhombus is all the properties of a parallelogram. Okay, so all the rules that go with parallelograms apply to rhombuses. I mean rhombi. And for a rhombus, all sides are congruent. For a rhombus, diagonals are perpendicular, and diagonals bisect the angles of a rhombus. This is basically, you don't have to rewrite this. This is the same statement as the page before. If a quadrilateral, this you are going to have to write down. If a quadrilateral, quadrilateral is both a rectangle and a rhombus, then it is a square. Okay, so it's got, a square is like a special case of a rectangle and a rhombus. A uh, square has all the properties of a parallelogram, a square has all the properties of a rectangle, and a square has all the properties of a rhombus. So everything applies to a, to a, a square. Use rhombus LMNP to find the value of y if the measure of angle 1 is y squared minus 54. Okay, so once again, this is a rhombus, and one of the special things about a rhombus is this is going to be a right angle. Not, and these are bisected. Okay. All right, opposite sides would be actually congruent, but let's go back to angle one, is 90 degrees. So if that's 90, then y squared minus 54 is going to be equal to 90. So if you ever have a little heart conniption right now, you see a y squared. All right, let's just, let's actually try to get our y squared by itself first, okay? Um, not that you couldn't use a quadratic formula or factoring further on down the road, but I'm going to isolate it because there, and part of my reason is, if I had a y squared plus y minus 54, that'd be different. But here I just have a y squared. So I actually have 144 equals y squared. How do you undo a square? Oh yeah, you square root. So y is equal to, and technically, it's plus or minus the square root of 154 or 144, but you know what? We can't have a negative distance or a negative angle. So really, we're just going to look at the positive here. And we have y is equal to 12. Example two. Use the rhombus LMNP to find the measure of angle PNL. PNL. There's your angle. If the measure of MLP, MLP is 64. So this entire, oops, I should put like, we're just going to swiggle. This is 64 degrees. Okay, first of all, if this is 64 degrees right here, doesn't this have to be 64 degrees because of the rule of parallelograms? And a rhombus is a type of parallelogram. 
So this is going to be 64 degrees. And a special thing with rhombus is that your diagonal bisects this. So if this is 64, then each one of these has to be equal. And if you can't read my writing, I am writing that each angle is 32 degrees. Example three, use rhombus, A, B, C, D, and the given information to find the value of each variable. Find x if the measure of angle one is 2x squared minus 38. Quick review, a rhombus, when the uh, diagonals bisect, form 90 degree angles. So that means 90 degrees is equal to the 2x squared minus 38. Some of you are having a little heart attack right now because you're looking at that x squared going, oh no, Mrs. Tally. But wait, it's just an x squared. There's not an x squared and an x. It's still a quadratic, but I probably won't need to use the quadratic formula. Okay? So now I have 128 is equal to 2x squared. Divide both sides by 2. x squared equals 64. So x is equal to the square root of 64. And I should have plus or minus 8, but in general, we only say just the value of 8 because if we put in negative 8, oh, I guess it would work either way. Okay? Because um, if I put negative 8 back in there, I would square it, and I'm going to come up with a positive 64. I mean, if they were asking for a side length, I couldn't have negative 8, but they're just asking for a value of x. All right, <clears throat> example 4. Use rhombus A, B, C, D, and the given information to find the value of, each <laughs> value of each variable. The measure of C, D, B. C, D, B. This angle right here. If we know the measure of A, B, C, A, B, C. So this entire angle right here is 126. Okay, so we got 126. Oh, yeah, then what is this one going to be over here? It's going to be 126. They tell us it's a rhombus. A rhombus cuts the angles in half of those diagonals. So if I take 126 and divide it by 2, I'm going to have 63 degrees for each one of them. Okay, so the measure of angle C, D, B is 63 degrees. All right, to check which type of quadrilateral, if you have perpendicular diagonals, then you have a rhombus or a square. We'll make a little flip chart thing of this, too. If the diagonals are congruent, then you have a rectangle, which also applies to square. And if the diagonals are congruent and perpendicular, then you have a square. Oh, I guess I have to go back here. If it's just congruent, um, then it's rectangle. If they're, rectang if they're congruent and perpendicular, then we're saying it's a square. All right. If we didn't get this written down in class, which I don't think we will, you need to get it written down now. Uh, some of this you already have. Actually, let me look it over. I think it was just in here um, earlier in this lesson. So you might not have to write it down. Double check. I think you're going to be good. All right. Have a happy winter.